What are these metal containers with screw on tops and strings attached? And about 100 years old. I found these while cleaning out an old house in Germany. The three large items seem to be containers, and the tops can be screwed on and off. My initial thought was it could be a canister from a really old-fashioned grease gun. Any ideas? They are called clisters or enemas. In the Middle Ages, doctors began to relieve the pain of constipation by giving enemas to the anus. They were also used as an alternative means of introducing nutrients into the body. The first reference to this is made by Celsus, who recommended an enema of pearl barley and milk or rose oil with butter as a nutrient for those suffering from dysentery and unable to eat. However, the primary role of the enema, especially from the 1700s onwards, was the clearing of the bowels using a water-based solution. In Britain during the 1800s, self-administration of enemas became a regular habit for many affluent people, resulting in dependency and damage to the rectum. What is this small rectangular brass box with open sides and front, found in a Canadian thrift store? There's a drawing of a woman in a dress on the top, and hammered textured brass on the bottom, about 2 by 1.5 inches, and shaped like a book without pages. There's a small engraving on what would be the spine of the book that says Austria, and a smaller word below it that I can't read. Any ideas? It's a matchbox holder. When matches were invented in 1830, people immediately tried to think of how to transport these dangerous things. The first match holders were produced as early as 1835 and were made of wood, later iron and other materials were used. The simple match holders were made for the common people. Only the wealthy could afford expensive holders, mostly made of silver or brass and richly ornamented. What is this toothed wooden post a bit over a meter high with an adjustable metal and wooden part that hooks on the notches, and it stands upright on a square wooden stand? It came with an old workbench bought by a friend in the Czech Republic. Do you have any ideas about it? It's an antique bench slave, an adjustable support device that accompanies a woodworking bench which provides additional support to a workpiece that is clamped into a vise. It could be used to hold very large panels for hand planing routing sanding etc. and hold longer pieces and keep them from slipping. What is this strange antique machine found in North Fork Long Island? It has six adjustable metal scoops and a rotating center arm that is either a spray or a peeler. There is a water spout much higher up that is confusing. Based on the region this was found I would think it is agricultural or some antiquated high-end kitchen item. Any idea what it is? It's an antique wine filling machine from the end of the 19th century, specifically for adding dosage and leveling sparkling wine bottles after they are disgorged. I've worked with a very similar unit, and they function surprisingly well. Sadly I don't think this one is in operating condition, and I believe there are several parts missing. Still a cool find. These are not too common here in the states, and if restored they continue to function well, or they can make a great feature decoration in a wine-themed venue. What is this cylinder with a plastic insert that has a spring inside? It seems to be made out of wax. This was from my wife's grandparents who lived in Germany for a while before they came to America. Does anyone have a clue? It's a 1920s German eternal flame candle that's missing its top. The coaster on the bottom isn't part of it. It's just being used as a coaster. The design is still Zenfels Castle. Perhaps it was a travel souvenir. You would press a candle down into the cylinder on top of the spring, and then screw in the cap with the wick protruding from the cap. Then as the candle burns, the spring pushes the candle up, keeping the flame level the whole time, and seeming like an eternal flame, until you have to replace the candle. What is this oddly shaped small carved wooden box with engravings? My wife found this in her great uncle's estate. It is hand carved, and the lid fits rather tightly, and will not come off unless pulled. And it almost looks like a shoe. Any ideas? It's a wooden snuffbox in the form of a Turkish slipper, from the 18th to the 19th century. There seemed to have been a hinge on the lid that made it swivel to reveal the carved interior and shut, fitting the opening securely. And these snuffboxes seemed to be quite common in that era. What is this musical instrument with three wooden claps linked by a silk thread? We don't know how to use it. 
so we don't know the sound it could make. My friend bought it in a batch at a public auction in France. Any ideas? It's a piban from the late 19th century, a clapper made from several flat pieces of hardwood or bamboo, or formerly sometimes also ivory or metal, which is used in many different forms of Chinese music. It is held vertically by one hand and clapped together, producing a sharp clacking sound. When used together with a small drum, both are played together by a single player, the piban held in one hand, and the drum played with a stick held in the other. What is this vintage pulley system thing spotted in a restaurant in Brooklyn? It seems to be made out of iron, and it had an engraving with the number 1910. Does anybody know what this is? It's an antique hay trolley, sometimes called hay unloader or hay carrier. Patented October 4, 1910 and marked the harvester and the star cross carrier. It was built by Hunt, Helm Ferris and Company of Harvard, Illinois. These were used to move loads of hay from a wagon into the barn for storage held by a sling or fork. The carriers traveled along the track, first wood beams, and then beginning in the 1890s steel rail. Every carrier depended on a pulley to raise and lower the load. What is this plate that has a little ledge on the end? It's brass and has a garden scene on it. I got it at a thrift shop today, and I thought maybe an ashtray, but I'm not sure what the little turned up ledge on the bottom is for. Any ideas? It's a French gilded bronze vide poche from the 19th to early 20th century. The vide poche, meaning empty pocket in French, is intended to be a trinket tray kept in a convenient location near the front door for holding the contents of your pockets, or equally as a beautiful object with which to decorate your home. What is this wooden box with a spout that I purchased at an antique store in Birmingham, Alabama? Around 31 inches long, by 12 inches wide and 18 inches high. The spout on the side is just under 1.5 inches in diameter. The tag set 1800s hand water pump, although does not seem to have been used for water. When the handle is pulled in and out, it creates air pressure. Both ends have a flap door that swings inside the box. I have searched on Google for phrases like pumps and water, but also on things like grain, diverter, and farm implements with no luck. What is this thing? It's a very old Japanese bellows box from the late 19th century. Japanese air bellows reached their current and finalized form by about the 6th century. They are constructed almost entirely of wood and allow a smith to supply a highly controlled air blast to the forge by pulling and pushing the handle slowly back and forth. Using dual chambers and two sets of valves, the air is supplied on both the push and the pull stroke. What is this stone top side table with a refrigerator style main compartment? About 3 feet tall by 1.5 feet wide and deep. The main compartment is horizontally oriented, not vertical. The drawer is locked, and I'm not sure if they open, or if is it somewhat connected to the lower compartment. Any idea what this could be? Please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Let's make life fun.